Hi and welcome to this section of the Advanced Algebra Tutor and in this section we're going to continue talking about polynomials and zeros of polynomials but in this case we're going to talk about what we call the complex zeros of polynomials and I really hate naming this section complex zeros because it just sounds hard it's complex it's complex zeros what is going on here okay uh, this stuff isn't really that hard uh, we're going to talk a little bit about imaginary numbers and complex numbers and I'm going to give you some background on that if you're not already an expert in that. But first I want to give you a little bit of motivation. In the previous section I told you and taught you that every polynomial uh, has what these things called zeros and those are the crossings of the x-axis. Those are the places where it crosses the x-axis and I told you that one of our big motivations for finding the zeros was so we can sketch the polynomial. Okay? Well I kind of led you to believe in the last section that every polynomial has so many zeros and all of those zeros are going to correspond to places on the plot where the thing crosses the x-axis. But let me give you a quick, kind of open your eyes a little bit here. What I told you before in the last section, uh, you know, sometimes it's, it's easier and better to kind of slowly reveal the, uh, take the wool over, over, pull the wool over somebody's eyes and kind of reveal the truth to them a little bit slowly instead of hitting them all at once, okay? What I told you was true if a polynomial looked like this. Uh, or, or even, uh, let's say, the, the polynomial, you know, kind of looks like this, or whatever. Every you know, single place where it crosses here is, uh, is a, uh, you know, a place where we're going to have a zero, okay? And I told you that, and that's true. But what happens if I have, let's just take a specific example. Let's say I have a quadratic like this, and we already learned this before. What if the uh, quadratic's over here? Okay, and we already know how to write those. This is just a shift to the right and a shift up. So it's a really simple uh, uh, function. But notice that this polynomial, this, this quadratic, this parabola, doesn't cross the x-axis at all. So you say, Jason, you lied to me. Before you told me that we're finding the zeros here, which is where these things cross, and you told me that every single polynomial is going to have zeros and uh, that you can find mathematically and that's going to correspond to the crossings of the x-axis. But here you're showing me a, another parabola that should have two zeros because it's an x squared type of type of function. So it should have two zeros but yet it doesn't cross the x-axis at all. So what gives? How can that be? Well, I'll just cut to the chase. This parabola doesn't cross the x-axis at all. It is still going to have two mathematical solutions for what we call zeros, but the uh, solutions that it has, that what we call the zeros, they're not going to be real numbers. They're going to be imaginary numbers or complex numbers, which are just imaginary numbers with a real part. And that, that, that's getting a little bit too detailed for what we need to talk about now. But basically, this guy is going to have two zeros mathematically that you can find, okay, and we will find them, but they won't be real numbers. The zero will not be at three or at 4, or at 6, it will be at 2i, or at 3i, or at 6 plus 2i, that's a complex number, okay? So you can't plot these imaginary numbers here, this is a plot of real numbers. This is x, this is f of x, these are real numbers. So it has the mathematical solutions, it just doesn't actually correspond to actually crossing the x-axis, so we say, so in the end they will end up becoming imaginary uh, roots, imaginary uh, zeros there. Okay, so that's sort of motivation more than anything else. I'm trying to teach you that the quadratic functions and all the functions that we're going to deal with, sometimes you're going to get real, uh, real uh, numbers for the zeros, and those are actually going to correspond to places where you cross. And sometimes when you actually solve these things, you're going to find imaginary numbers as part of your zeros. And you're going to say, what does that mean? Well, that just means that mathematically, what I told you was right, 